Mr. Mobbing. Great to be here. I'm glad. And I know that for you, inspiring young people has been like number one on your list for quite a long time. I remember you went to KNUSD. It was a filled auditorium. So many young people, you were there with Sarkodie. Yeah. How was that like? And why is it so important to share pieces of advice with young people? I think, I think we're basically in this world to impact people and impact the next generation. Uh, so we leave the right footprints and legacies through our path here on earth. Yeah. So the idea was, uh, and I think it came from Sarkoti actually, who's okay. my very good friend, and he says, listen, uh, I just don't, don't want to go and sing and dance and, you know, with all the noise, but I think we should leave them with something. And I think you've got the nuggets to live with them, mm. how they can come out and control their lives and be responsible for their lives and get into business and stuff. So he brought the fun bit. I brought the business bit. Get into business. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the UT story or you being a business. Because I know that, you know, you were a military officer for a number of years before yeah. starting UT. Tell us a bit about um, that. Yeah, I was in the military for about seven and a half years. Okay. And I was pushed out because not, not as in sacked or anything, but the system was turned upside down and I, it, it was no more the army I wanted to be a part of. So I, I walked out. This way back in on your own, yeah. you walked out. This is way back in 1982. 1982. Uh -huh. Where are you born? <laughs> <laughs> how, how young were you then, or how old were you? I then? was 30 years. 1982. Yeah. <laughs> no, let me, let me do that. I'm, I'm 71, so don't don't. What? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I walked out of the army, and for 15 years, I was trying to do all kinds of businesses. I even went out of the country, went to London, I couldn't fit, I came back, went to Nigeria, I didn't find it exciting, I came back, went to Liberia, and I decided I was going to stay here. Mm. And it wasn't easy, 15 years of doing all kinds of businesses. Like, um, what kind of businesses did you try? I was, initially was buy and sell. Okay. Anything I could buy and make a margin on it, and I ran some credit and mm -hmm. supply and things like that. Then we went into importation of ceramics, uh, building materials, uh, wines, then we went in, I went into trucking, I seen trucking. Yeah. And had a company called Harlem Trucking. Ah. And then I went into air conditioning business. I was into timber business. Hey. I was into construction, uh, government contracts. I was uh, also into oil business. I was mainstream oil business. Okay. Um, <laughs> you tried everything. And I was a, a, a station, a petrol station dealer. You know, the ah. Osu Total mm -hmm. around the Kuala mm -hmm. area. I was the dealer for four years. And uh, I did almost everything. There's not, no business I wouldn't do. Okay. And uh, along the line, I get opportunities, but I don't get funding. I mean, all the young people, the problem is how do I get funding? How do I get funding? Mm -hmm. And with all my experience in the Army, degree, chartered accountant, and I was teaching at the stock exchange, I still couldn't get funding. Yeah. So you can see how big the problem was. Mm -hmm. And that hit me one time that, listen, if nobody's going to give you the funding, then get into giving funding. And therefore, uh, I decided to set up a finance house. Okay. And that became Unique Trust Financial Services mm -hmm. with all its problems, start, startup problems, and what it became as a bank and what have you. For someone who couldn't find funding and who needed money to run his business, where were you getting the money to lend to people? That's interesting. But the point is, you, don't, you have to raise the monies and then all lend to people. So it's not as if you are rich and you said, I'm giving my money out for lending. Mm -hmm. So when we started, um, we had to get the lines and everything. And then we thought we were going to get friends contributing money, but all of them disappointed us. So mm -hmm. we had to start very, very small. Uh, we started from Cantamanto mm -hmm. in one room with staff of three. I see. And I was broke. And not only was I broke, <laughs> My home was also broken because my wife had left me with the kids. Oh. And that is when I started. And I was at the age, at age 45. What? So when I see kids rushing to make immediate, I say, take your time, you know. Just make sure you build the right capacities and things like mm -hmm. that. So we started from there. And then we had to raise monies from friends and things like that. And the story is, I, I thought I was going to get one or two people who were going to put in big money and then we start lending. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't get it. So we had to actually go to a lot of friends and take small, small monies and wow. put it together and use it to run the company and to own land. And awesome. as we lent out the monies and we're able to pay them back and the way we run the processes, mm. I mean, I will go and look for the money. 
I will come and sit at this bed alone and everything, mm -hmm. and I will go for to, rec uh, to recover the money, mm -hmm. and I will also go with my own register to go and pay interest on the money that we had borrowed. You were doing that all by yourself? There were only four. Yeah. And the others didn't have the acumen to do it, so I had to do everything. And that's one lesson about starting business. It's mm -hmm. always easier to start small and mm -hmm. grow. Mm -hmm. When you start small, that is nature's way of having things. You know, God created us small babies, then we crawl, then mm -hmm. we walk, then we run, then we grew to be big things. Even the forest, it starts with a small seed. Yeah. And then it becomes a seedling and it grows to become a mighty tree. So starting small is always something you have to look at. And the advantage is that once you start small, it means you know every aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. it's later on, as you grow that, you sort of share some of the business for other people to handle. So that's uh, part of the problem that we had. And everything is documented in, in, the book. in the book. Especially volume one is about uh, humble beginnings, how to start small and grow your business. And the problems that you normally go through with funding, yeah. with your staff, with the structures, or lack of them, and so on and so forth. It's all in there. It's all in there. So you started from being a financial service um, you know, business yeah. to now own like a real bank. It's, it was a long journey of about 11 years. Hmm. Which was quite fast, yeah. 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 Because uh, initially, as I said, we started, we were just three, we didn't have money, and then we started getting recognition, so and so forth. Mm -hmm. And then we started branching out. Yeah. Because then we set another office in Tema. The interesting thing about Tema was that at the time, it was believed that a financial institution or finance <coughs> could not set up a branch. Mm. And I realized that my Clients were coming mostly from Tema to go and take, to come and take money to go and clear the goods. Okay. And it was risky carrying all those money. So I told my, one of my staff, I said, listen, to help our clients, let's go to Tema and open a branch. The first thing is that we don't have a provincial bank of Ghana. I said, mm -hmm. go anyway. So they went to Tema to open a branch. It was one bank of Ghana came to audit our booth. They realized some of the files were not, they were, they were in Tema. Mm. And they asked, why are the files not here? I said, they are in Tema. He said, who asked you to open a branch in Tema? I said, we don't have a branch in Tema. Mm -hmm. He said, so what are the files doing? I said, they are in the liaison office. Mm. And then they themselves wrote a report and said, we went to the Tema branch. So it means they had accepted. Yeah. And I said, let's fire on. So we opened another branch in Kumasi, then we went to Takradi and so on and so forth. Now, to become a bank, you need, of course, the funding, the necessary capital to do it. At some point, we had the capital. But no one will give you banking lines those days. They yeah. wouldn't. Especially for some guy from Kukran to me who has done business and thinks he's uh, mm -hmm. too known and so on and so forth. So we decided to buy an existing bank. Okay. So interestingly, we bought a foreign owned bank, which was mm. called BPI, mm -hmm. and we rebranded it into UT Bank. Ah. So we had UT Bank, and then we had also the UT subsidiaries. Yeah. And we created a holding company. Um, in a nutshell, it's, it's, it was a fantastic story with a staff of three. In 2012, mm. we had a total staff UT group of, of over 2,500. And, um, <laughs> and we had a bank, yeah. we had a properties company, we had a logistics company, we had an insurance company, we had uh, um, an office in Lagos, mm. we had an office in South Africa, and uh, we even had an office in... Hamburg in Germany, and had an office in London. Wow. So. Is it, is it true then that you were calling people at dawn? And I'm sure you heard this no, joke no, no, a long no, no, time. No, 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 it's true. You were calling people at dawn? Not only call, we jumped their walls at dawn. <laughs> I, not they, they, I. Huh? Yes. To ask them why they are sleeping when they owe you. No, you see, the point, <laughs> the point is, no. No, but I don't let it sound like too casual. The point okay. is, I struggle convince people who are reluctant to give me their money, but trust me to give them money. Mm -hmm. And I listen to your case and say, listen, the money can help you. And we agree on it. And then I lend the money to you on terms that we all think is favorable to you. Mm -hmm. Then you take the money. Time for you to come and pay. You don't come. You don't call. I call. You don't no, pick. We come to your house. You are not there. <laughs> And I don't understand why Ghanaians think I should just let it, let it be. Mm -hmm. No, because my business is based on the promise I've given the investors. Yeah. I will, if, sorry, I can't kill you, but <laughs> I, I will hound you until I get the money. And I used to go to people, and I'll go in, in the evening after work, I'll go at 12 o'clock, if they're not there, I'll go back at 4. By yourself? I, yes. We're 4. 
and I had to lead. It's hey. leadership by example. And I, I, I jumped people's walls and I shot at them. I, Dogs I, didn't chase you. Sometimes. <laughs> <they did. laughs> sometimes. Even some people pulled guns at us sometimes. Wow. Yeah. But you still got your money anyway. We still got it. But there's some it. people who went away with your exactly. money. Exactly, a few of them. I mean, like some people will vanish from their office and their homes and things. There's one guy who closes, who had his office in Kaneshi and lived in Awushi. He closed the office in Kaneshi, he left moved. his house in Awushi. We couldn't find him. Till date? No, we found him. Oh, eventually you did. So I was sitting down quietly and I said, well, this guy must be a very good Christian because he kept reciting some Bible passage when mm -hmm. he was in my office. So I told my guy, I said, let's, let's go and ask where he, he worships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we went to the house and said, that guy, where does he go to church? And they said, oh, I will see something, something. So I said, okay, Sunday morning, go there mm -hmm. and go and lay ambush. <laughs> if he comes, of course, then get hold and bring him. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't come, as a pastor, where mm -hmm. that uh, child, uh, that, that, that son of his. Yeah. Uh, so they went there Sunday morning. And here he was. Worshiping. With, with his wife and children oh. following him. They said, Master, <laughs> if you don't want any day, day here, you let your wife and children go, but you have to go and see the old man, which is me. Yeah. He had moved from Kanesha Awoshi to Teshinungwa. Oh. Yeah. With the money he borrowed from your company, I'm sure. Yeah. And he wasn't prepared to pay. Is that something that's very typical of Ghanaians? And I have my own story about this. Yeah. I mean, when somebody needs help, they come to you, they tell you all kinds of stories. But when it's time to pay, it's a different story altogether. It's a, let's do it for a, another discussion because it's something about our mindsets and what makes us who you are, who we are, mm. and why we do the things that we do. And it's typical of not only Ghanaians, but Africans. Are Ghanaians honest? Honest? Yeah. No. Ghanaians are not honest? No. Generally, no. Why do you say that? It's a fact. Mm. I mean, anybody who started trying to do business will tell you. You bring even your brother, your cousin, your best friend, and so along the line, they will just ditch you. That's what happened to you with UT Bank? Uh, with me, it was a bit tough because uh, I, I was, I, I run my business based on policies and systems. And when you do it on policies and systems, it means it doesn't matter who. Mm. Once you go outside the boundaries or the systems, you are fired. Yeah. And I'm known, I fired my brother, I fired my cousin, I fired my director, I mm. fired... It's not that I fired them, they fired themselves, because this yeah. is the system and you went contrary to it. Mm -hmm. You must be that hard and that disciplined for you not to be betrayed by people. Mm. They will betray you once, but then yeah. they won't get you again. But you see, again, we have a system in Ghana, in the, our traditional way of living, where people will come and plead and all sorts of things, and you can't sack, for example, somebody who goes to the same church with you because the pastor will intervene, yeah. or someone who comes from the same town because this is, or someone who was brought by a politician. Mm -hmm. So you find that these people can stay and cause damage. Yeah. So the thing is, put the systems in place. You follow the systems yourself. You, the owner of the business. Mm -hmm. And tell me why, if I'm not doing something, you should do it. Hmm. That's the way to go. But you said something about UT Bank and how the license was revoked. And, you know, there was a time when you said you don't necessarily blame the finance minister. You blame Ghanaians for voting these people into power. Yeah. How, I don't know how Ghanaians will take that or how they took it at the time. But, yes, they voted them into power, but they are not the ones that shut it down. Is it yeah, that but, you're, but you're, when you vote people into power, the you, they the, are to represent you. That's a wider contest. Democracy is about representation. So these are people we've represented, or people who are going to present us and to act in our name. That's what I meant. So that means we voted wrongly. Yeah, as, as it turned out. If you ask me, yes, we voted wrongly. For and, President Kufuado. And for what has happened around, I think uh, you can look at me in the eye and tell me that, yes, I'm telling you the truth. Times are hard. Times are really hard. What the government has done this time, it's Unbelievable. Um, see, we consume the past because people's savings, everything went. We're consuming the present. High taxes, inflation, mm. utilities are going up by the day. And we've consumed the, 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 the future yeah. because there's, there are deaths that have been scheduled ahead of us. Mm -hmm. It is a desperate situation.
And I don't think we've been in this situation before. We haven't? No. So if you had a way, would you say that, again, you said that it was wrong, or we, we made the wrong choice in terms of presidency, but these are people who are your friends or were your friends. Yeah. But it's about thinking they will do the right thing by not doing the would right thing. Would you say this if your bank was still active? Absolutely, yes. I'm not talking about Kufia Mwabe and his, his bank, no. Um, if you want to talk about the bank, the whole lot of issues, that, the reason why I don't discuss it very often is that people will say that, yeah, he's being personal and he's peeved and all those things, but that's not the, the true story. The thing, it doesn't make sense to me. If you take me out, one, I struggled with my team to build a bank. And I told you about the story, how yes. we built it. It's a great Ghanaian story. Yes. I don't care who's judging it. And we need to create such stories and mm -hmm. have a lot of it. That is what amounts to a country being developed or not. Every company will go into some kind of difficulty at some point in time. Mm -hmm. So the government comes in and realizes that, ah, UT is uh, having nuclear support and the Bank of Ghana is supporting it. UT, UT was about 800 million, right? Mm -hmm. Which it cannot pay because of the problem, the structure and things like that. The government spent about 2.2 billion to close to UT close Bank. Down, now, yeah. if somebody owes you 800 million and you have 2.2 billion to throw away, at least give it to the bank as, as, uh, as a loan mm. instead of just throwing the money away. Yeah. And UT didn't need 2.2 million cities to even turn around. But that decision decided to take. Mm -hmm. I don't know the facts that they had. They probably had something which they believed in and so on and so forth. But everywhere in this world, US, wherever, some stories are too big to just throw away. Yeah. And even banks that have been around for over 100 years go into these difficulties and mm -hmm. the government bails them out and they pay and continue business. Mm -hmm. So how do we grow businesses in Ghana where they survive their owners and chalk 100 years and so on and so forth. If a party comes and decides, I don't like this person, therefore I'll close the person's business. Is that, be, is that what it was? But it's because been, you've said it yourself that you had a conversation with the finance minister the night before and nothing of this sort came up. No. And the next morning before you realized you had missed calls from your daughter yeah. and they had just yeah. shut down your bank. Yeah. And not only that, I left the bank about 18 months mm -hmm. before the bank before, was closed down. Yeah. I am in court as we speak. Mm -hmm. I mean, 18 months, if there had been anything, it would have come out because there was a new MD and the board was functioning and things. Yeah. But then forget about that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go for medical checkup, right? Mm -hmm. And we go to court for them to release my passport to me. After up and down, up and down, the judge says, I don't see how he keep his passport. Let him go and check yeah. and come back. Because after all, if he dies, the case will die. Mm. So he gave me my passport. When I went to American Embassy, and I've been going to America since the 80s, American Embassy refused me entry. entry visa. When I checked through the back door, there's a letter from some government department saying that I was a security risk or I shouldn't be made to fly. Even after the court had ordered yeah, for your Yeah, even after the court released. had given me my, my passport. So you know what I did? And I'm very, very tough to break. I said, grant to me, I don't need a visa. So I went to my village, grant to me. Now, why would, and <laughs> you see, you see, I dazed a bit. I am. What's yeah. a bit? Yeah, yeah. Completely. You know, so, so um, I think uh, what happens is that you have people who are envious, who are jealous, who are vindictive, and they hide behind the institutions. Mm -hmm. They are like cockroaches, actually. Mm. You see, cockroaches making noise in there. Now, as soon as you put on the light, they all hide. Yeah, yeah. So you will not see them, but you know that they are causing havoc. And, and, it's, and it's also sad because the government, when they come into power, they compromise mm, all the state not. institutions. Yeah. All. Not even one is no, left. No. They change all the heads and they put their puppets or their cronies or their cohorts and whatever. And they can really uh, make you uncomfortable mm -hmm. if you want to. It's a matter of telling whoever you put there that make the guy uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's what happens. You, you, did you see this coming? No, I, I don't see it coming. I don't hate people. I don't, yeah. hate, as I sit here, I still don't hate anybody. Even after everything that has happened no, no, to you? No, no, no. No malice at all? At all. I don't have time because I'll be eating my own uh, mind. Yeah. And I don't have it. So I only pray to God that whoever hates me, God should 
tone down on the punishment for the person. Because God loves me. If, if you hate me, he will punish you. No, but we, sometimes we pray and we're like, fire, die, <laughs> nah, do nah, this, nah, do nah, that. Nah, 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 you don't nah. believe in that. No, no, no. You should pray for your enemies. It's tough. Yeah, yeah I pray for them. After all, how much do you need? I think we tend to rate ourselves too highly. Mm. But I always tell people, remember that you are only one out of eight billion people. Mm -hmm. So really, you are unique, you are special, mm. but you're not worth anything. One out of eight billion, any day, the maths, you can't even put the zeros there. But you are supposed to do your bit. So do your bit and leave the rest to, and the Bible says you should not judge. And leave the rest so you to cannot all. judge. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know how I would handle this. But now you say what, you're a broke man? I seem broke. Yeah, you broke. Let me tell a story so that you can judge <laughs> yourself. I went to the police station for questioning and interrogation. And after wasting my time for a three hours, the policeman said, oh, Captain, oh, oh, they're a big man, give us something. I said, but they've taken my bank and everything. So I don't have money. He says, Captain, this one there, I won't agree. Mm. Somebody who chops sand, it doesn't matter how much he washes his mouth, some, some sand will day inside. So I am broke compared to where I was and everything. But luckily for me, I don't have too many responsibilities. My okay. kids are grown, I live in an apartment, I can mm. eat and things like that. The only thing which pains me is that I can't do as much as I want to do for people. Mm. You know, at UT we used to do breast cancer night, support orphanages, yeah. and now I can't. Mm -hmm. And I see the need even, even more so now. But what can you do? You do your bit as and when you can. And if you can't do it, you let others do it. So mm. that is where I see where I could be of help, but of course I have to control myself because I can't do it. You can't do it. And that is a bit regrettable. But to take care of myself, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. And you're spending some good time. I, I know you exercise a lot. You're 71, you don't even look it. And I'm sure you I'm get this all the time. Yeah, I get it all the time. I don't feel it. Um, How old do you feel? Uh, more like 39. I feel like I, I tell you, some exercises and things that I, I do, a lot of you young men can do it. You do a lot of I take care of myself. I exercise at least once a week. I play golf about three times a week. Mm. I control my diet. I sleep well. I don't hate anybody. And I have a special relationship with my creator. Yeah. So I'm always satisfied. Always. Always. And you spend some time writing books. Yeah. So yeah, we have one, volume one see, and volume two. It's one the thing story. impacting people, giving them jobs and things like that, but it's a different level. And I think possibly um, the UT story went the way it did or has mm. because God wanted me to do something else. Okay. Fine, you employ 2,500 people. They know your story. They respect everything, but that's not enough. And I have a very good story to tell, how mm. to build a company, the challenges, the pitfalls, the values, the troughs, and things like that. And I said, listen, wait. Why is all this mess going? Let me document yeah. this yeah. as um, a solid resource for the younger generation and for those who want to uh, do business. Mm -hmm. So I started, I wanted to write a book on the UT story. I worked with my co-author and he said, Kofi, listen, mm. the story, if we really, really must tell it, is too rich one book is not enough. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let's break it into two. So we have volume one and volume two. Yeah. But even with the two volumes, we had to leave the whole bank issue out. So the bank issue is not It's here. not in the, the that, yes. that is book three, which is going to be launched early next year. Okay. And that is what people are expecting. Yeah. Here. But I tell you, if you want to start a business, you want to grow the business and grow it into international and have success, it's in book one and two. Well, you should get one. How many of you have the book? Have you ever read it? Oh, there's someone who has it there. So it's just one person out yeah. of all of you. I see someone still be writing notes on what you're saying. Yeah. You're writing notes? Yeah. Please, can we pass on the microphone? Hi, gentlemen. Please come forward a bit so we can see. What are you writing down exactly? Thank you very much. I wrote, as a businessman, you need to lay down policies, systems, and structures. With the story of the bank, the UT Bank, you said... You believe in policies, systems uh, in place, right? And the same government was also using the same policies, structures, and systems. And you are not happy about them. So those are the things so, you're writing Yes. Down. So no. I was asking myself, why is it that you believe in policies, structures, but the government is also implementing policies and structures? No. The issue is 
the government does not feed the institutions to work. Yeah. And they use the institutions for their own personal agendas. You understand? You see the difference? Okay. I mean, for example, um, all institutions, who appoints the heads? Mm. It's the government of yes. the day. And then when the government appoints the heads, then it should leave them free because Governor Bank of Ghana is supposed to be independent. The military is supposed to be independent. The judiciary is supposed to be independent. Parliament is supposed to be independent. But do you see that independence? No. Is the way the government wants, that's how things go. Mm. Okay. So this is a situation which is like the opposite of what I'm expecting. Government will not let the institutions work on their own and they, they always control them and let them act in the, in the direction they want. By a company, you as a head, once you put your systems in place, you hold people accountable and responsible. Mm. And if they are not performing as they should perform, they face the necessary sanctions. Okay. I see. Well, well, okay, but uh -huh. uh, I just want to ask, if uh, per what you are saying, I really understand that, then uh, were the government not also looking at the security of uh, the innocent or let's say the vulnerable Ghanaians who are saving over there, that maybe in the near future, we may not be hearing of a uh, UT bank again. We just wake up and then realize that there is no UT bank or... I don't know if the government was also looking at that area. That is why they tried to revoke those. They uh, didn't license. try. They actually did. Okay, that's why <laughs> they revoked those lances. Yeah, but the point is, what do you see? What do you see around now? You find people who are culpable, but nothing is happening. You find people can get away with certain things because they are under the cover of the party that is in power. That is that is using the systems mm. to protect the wrong deeds of, of your people. Okay. So the systems can work too with. I mean, in everything, you have options. You have a gun. Who can use to defend yourself? I can, you have a gun. Who can use to kill someone? Okay. So the systems are good. They are there, but they've been tweaked to serve the government of the day. That is dangerous. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very much. I'm sure maybe later you can meet him and ask him about it. But but, are you going to set up another bank? No. You won't. You're no. done. No. I have tasted it. I have nothing to prove. So I say, oh, you will rise again. And I say, well, God decides who will rise and who will fall. Yeah. And God took me to that level. And God may decide I should do something or other. But I'm not desperate to prove that I am up again. And I'm not fighting anybody. Mm. So uh, I'm very happy where I am. Um, it is not the, that is why I also keep fit. Because mm -hmm. if you want God to use you again, you must, you must keep stay. that vehicle that you have your body. Mm -hmm. Keep it in a shape that you can use it. If you don't keep yourself healthy and exercise and keep yourself well and you are sick, God cannot use you. Mm. True. So, so all I'm doing now, um, keep stable, right to impact people. And also I've set up a foundation, PK mm -hmm. Moabin Leadership Foundation. Okay. And the foundation promotes the books. Uh, and I go to schools, I go to companies, and we talk to them about entrepreneurship and leadership and things like that. Because what we need is a change in the mindset of the leaders. Um, the leadership should actually care for the people, respect everybody. And the way to respect people is to actually make sure that systems work independently. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have a system which our own system which goes against that. Mm -hmm. For example... Traditionally, the chief is supposed to be the uh, overlord. And the chief is supposed to control the policies and the system. But he yeah, is above he the systems. Yeah. So, and in business, it's, it's the opposite. You must lead by example. You can't yeah. say that you are a chief of your company because you formed the company. Therefore, you're going to do something else. And your workers should do something else. Mm. It will never work. Definitely. So we need to change that mindset. Okay. And, and that's what I go around with the foundation to talk about and let people realize that we need to change our mindset to actually change the narrative of Ghana and Africa. Absolutely. And, and you know, um, so that is what I do, and it occupies me a lot. Okay. You know, normally I drive myself. I don't have a driver, so if I have to go to, say, tech or go to chemicals or something, I drive you myself drive. all the yeah. way and go and talk and things. And interesting enough, because our youth... I don't have the means to use a lighter form. They can't even afford the books. So what I'm trying to do now is get corporate sponsorship for the books mm -hmm. and give it to the, the books to the students or the tertiary uh, students. But the point is, if you give it to them freely, 
they will take they it back, they will not read. Yeah. So you give it at a very discounted um, right. value. My father used to say that uh, if you have soft ears, you get experience for free. Mm. But experience can be very expensive, it can even cost you your life. So get it for free by reading. Would you leave us with final words to Sarkozy? I know he's your very good friend. Would you say he's your favorite artist at the moment? Yeah, but it has to be. It has to be Sarkozy. It has to be Sarkozy. What about him do you love so much? Uh, the, one, the man has got swag. Mm. And he's so calm. I mean, um, I, we just lost a common friend who was... Sarkozy is a very good friend. Died at the age of 87. Mm. Yeah, and uh, he learns. He respects the uh, elders. He still relates to the young people. Uh, he's got swag. Yeah. He, he's, Can he's you rap all his, his songs? No, no. I, not I, even I, one? No. Sarkozy so, is supposed to be the fastest rapper. How, yeah. how, how can I rap? Oh, but that's something that we've learned as well that we can do. No, but when I was young, I used to do it. Now, now I just listen to the beat and that's it. And you just chill. Yeah. What's your favorite Sarkozy song? Well, you know, uh, Can't Let You Go. I'm featured in the video ah. with Prof. And I was at the wedding, mm -hmm. and Tracy is my body, and so obviously it has to be Can't Let You Go. Well, we're going to wrap up with Can't Let You Go. DJ Filter, are you ready? Maybe we should have a part two of this when the third volume comes out. Definitely. Are you going to be available for I'll us? be available next year. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Mr. Kofi Martin. It's been a pleasure. Please put your hands together. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you so much. Mm, how lucky I am, right? Eh?